Good to see you here in the Lord's place this morning. It's still, still a bit like a messy manger scene. I hope you don't mind, all of you tidy people. Just get over it. It's okay, you know. Great things happened in a very messy place. And, and if your place is like mine, great, play, great things happen in your messy place too, I'm sure. We can't all be perfect all of the time. Um, perfect Saviour was born in an imperfect world. And, uh, and that was part of God's plan, to bring Jesus into this imperfect world, to fulfil our perfection for us, because we can't. And that was what it was all about. Today, the, the text, and uh, Chris will put it up on screen, is this one from Luke 2, 29, 32. Let's read it. As we read it, see if you can uh, remember where we hear this or have heard it regularly in our worship. Lord... I am your servant, and now I can die in peace, because you have kept your promise to me. With my own eyes I have seen what you have done to save your people, and foreign nations will also see this. Your mighty power is a light for all nations, and it will bring honour to your people Israel. The opening sentences come from Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son born of a woman, under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And we are here in his name, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing this uh, classic Christmas hymn, O Light of Gentile Nations. Your servant still may be Friends, I invite you with me to confess that sin that is ours and seek the mercy of the Lord. There will be a prayer for us to pray. Let's not uh, gallop. Let's ease into each line. Just pause and then read and pray. We confess to you, Almighty God, before the whole company of heaven and to each other that we have sinned in thought, word and deed by our own fault have mercy on us for Jesus' sake forgive us all our sins and bring us to eternal life Amen Our almighty and merciful God grants you pardon forgiveness is yours and I assure you of that as I speak that same word from the Lord, I forgive you all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
The Lord bless you with peace now and always. Amen. And the psalm for today is Psalm 148. It's a psalm of praise. And so being a psalm of praise, you get to praise the Lord quite a bit. Are you up to it? Maybe you could stand because praise comes a bit easier when we're standing. <laughs> praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise the Lord. All his angels, all his host. Praise the Lord. Sun and moon and all you shining stars. Praise the Lord. You highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Praise the Lord. Let them praise the name of the Lord for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord. And you sea monsters and all deeps. Praise the Lord. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Praise the Lord. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Praise the Lord. Wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Praise the Lord. So kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, praise the Lord. Young men and women alike, old and young together, praise the Lord. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He's raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord you the lord be with you thank you so we pray almighty and merciful god we thank you for sending your son to become human like us so that we might become your children make us who trust in jesus to be more and more like him for he lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen and here's the word for the day. Thank you, Lynn. Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 10 and 62 to th verse 3. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with raiments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the soil makes the sprout come up and the garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your vindication and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendour in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your mm -hmm. God. This is the Lord's word. Thank you, Lord. Second reading is Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into your hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. This is the Lord's word. Thank, Thank you, you, Lord. Lord. Gospel reading is Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 44. Simeon and Anna see Jesus. The time came for Mary and Joseph to do what the law of Moses says a mother is supposed to do after her baby is born. They took Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem and presented him to the Lord. Just as the law of the Lord says, each firstborn baby boy belongs to the Lord. The law of the Lord also says parents have to offer a sacrifice, giving at least a pair of doves or two young pigeons. So that was what Mary and Joseph did. At this time, a man called Simeon was living in Jerusalem. Simeon was a good man. 
He loved God and was waiting for him to save the people of Israel. God's spirit came to him and told him that he would not die until he had seen Christ the Lord. When Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple to do what the law of Moses said should be done for a new baby, the spirit told Simeon to go to the temple. Simeon took the baby Jesus in his arms and praised God. Lord, I am your servant, and now I can die in peace, because you have kept your promise to me. With my own eyes I have seen what you have done to save your people, and foreign nations will also fear this. Your mighty power is a light for all nations, and it will bring honour to your people Israel. Jesus' parents were surprised at what Simeon had said. Then he blessed them and told Mary, this child of yours will cause many people in Israel to fall and others to stand. The child will be like a warning sign. Many people will reject him and you, Mary, will suffer as though you have been stabbed by a dagger. But all this will show what people are really thinking. The prophet Anna was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Phanel from the tribe of Asher and she was very old. In her youth, she had been married for seven years, but her husband had died. And now she was 84 years old. Night and day, she served God in the temple by praying and often going without eating. At this time, Anna came in and praised God. She spoke about the child Jesus to everyone who hoped for Jerusalem to be set free. After Joseph and Mary had done everything that the law of the law of the Lord commands, they returned home to Nazareth in Galilee. The child Jesus grew. He became strong and wise, and God blessed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, as God's people of, of this time and place, I invite you to confess our faith. Um, and we confess that faith with people of every age who have placed their faith and trust in the Lord. Can I ask you to stand if you're able? You don't have to. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated now. And Uh, bless you. Yeah. Uh, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, um, Carl spoke of hope, but one of the realities that we often deal with in this world is despair, isn't it? So sometimes we best understand hope in the context of despair. I don't know if any of you have sat uh, watching the news over this last year uh, and they get to the bit, firstly, about Ukraine and Russia. But in recent times, of course, we've seen far more images of what's happening between Israel and Gaza. <sighs> Just about drives us to despair. I don't know about you. Um, Joy says, we don't have to watch this. And why don't we want to watch it? Because it's a, it's, a, it's a situation that we just have no control over. And, and, and it kind of gets us to that point where, where we're really almost without hope. It can destroy hope in us. Lord, why? Why does this have to happen? 
Despair is a horrible place to be in. Maybe you've had your own personal season of despair. I can probably say I've been there. Maybe you have too. All sorts of things can bring it on. Uh, A dictionary describes despair as uh, the complete loss or absence of hope. It might be a place of grief. It might be a place of abject sorrow and just hopelessness. I think, and I know we get tastes of despair in life around us. It happens when things out of our control cause loss and limit our lives and etch away at our hope. It might be our own poor health or the deteriorating health of somebody that we love. It might be the actions of somebody not directly related to us, who says or does stuff that impacts on our lives and we just feel hopeless because we've got no way to respond to this. It might be an incident like a car accident that robs us of our ability to get to work or something that blows our budget out of the park. We're a relatively comfortable middle-aged middle-class group of people here and and some of these things don't have that great an impact on us but they do on many other people and they're led to hopelessness and like I suggested before that sense of despair we have when we consider some of those huge tragedies the wars but also the tragedy of fire a flood Despair can be personal. It can be for me and my life. It can be for my family and people close to me. It can be with the lives of people we don't even know. It can have to do with the here and now of this moment in time or we can project our thoughts out further and, and it can say we can say, well, can anybody recover from this? So something in the future. Despair also happens when we get out of kilter with the Lord, when this righteousness that is God's gift to us, for us to be right with him, and so being right with him, being able to be right with other people around us, gets out of kilter. We, we, we distance ourselves from the Lord. When sin is far from us, no, sorry, when sin is close to us and righteousness is far from us, Its consequences surround us so that our hope might be blanketed by gloom. You might reflect on things that cause you to despair. Today's word that we've heard, three readings from scripture, answer the temptation perhaps that we might have to despair. It begins with the promise given by God through Isaiah. His nation is under oppression, the oppression of sin and sin's consequences. He's talking to people who are feeling abandoned, dried and discarded with little left to live for. And here in this word through Isaiah, God promises them a new life. He promises to restore them as his people. This is what he says. You could read it with me, for he's clothed me with garments of salvation, arrayed me in the robe of his righteousness, as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and the bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seed to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. This is a promise This is a promise that is to lift people out of despair and give them hope. Because God is actively restoring them. He's saving them from sin's consequences, their own sin and the sin of others. And that's his promise. So now they have something to live for, something new. It's going to be all right, is the hope that God gives them. The short reading from Galatians 4 reminds us that God did what he promised. Yes, it really is going to be all right. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born 
under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, and for sons, children, um, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you're his child, God has made you also an heir. That gives me hope, and I hope it gives you hope too. However, it's in the gospel that we hear and see the reality of the birth of Jesus and how here, in, how here this, this birth of Jesus impacts on two people who longed to see this day arrive. What was the man's name starting with S? Simeon. Simeon. Simeon was an old man. There was another person, her name started with A, Anna. Faith and trust had survived in them for decades. They had hope for decades. They were hoping to see the Christ child, the Messiah. Finally, it plays out. They weren't in despair. But no doubt there were times when they were tempted. And that's us too, when things take their time to work through our lives. That's, our, that's us when our hopes are dashed on the rocks, when sin tempts us to look away from the Lord and what he has promised. I know it, and you know it. Thank the Lord that he gave us Simeon and Anna to express for us what it means when our hope is restored and despair dispelled and we're set free again to live in freedom and hope. It's interesting, and the gospel records this, that at the same time that, that Jesus, uh, sorry, that Mary and Joseph, in close proximity to Jesus, came through the doors into the temple, uh, Simeon was prompted by the Spirit, it says in the gospel, to come to the temple. Anna was already there. She'd been a prophet there for decades, serving the Lord and fasting from time to time too. See, both of these people were obedient to the prompting of the Lord and their reward finally was to meet Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the promised one, where their hope had rested for all these decades of their lives. All the promises they know from ancient time were fulfilled in that moment for them. Simeon is inspired to take the child in his arms and lift him high and praise God for this gift of life in the world. This is what he says. You could join him as he says, Lord, I am your servant and now I can die in peace because you've kept your promise to me. With my own eyes, I've seen what you have done to save your people and foreign nations will also see this. Your mighty power is a light for all nations and it will bring honour to your people, Israel. There's four things in these words that we've heard that were true then and are true now. The first is that it was a gift for them. Right then and there, for Simeon and Anna, this was a gift. Their own eyes saw the Messiah. The second thing it was a gift for the whole of creation. It wasn't just theirs, but it was for everyone, for the whole world and for all creation. The third thing is, yes, it was a gift given in that moment. It was a gift for that moment. And the fourth thing is, it's a gift for eternity. The gift of the Saviour, the Christ, the Messiah. Well, he was, he is the Alpha and the Omega. The gift of the Christ child become flesh is for all ages what does that mean for us well it's a gift for you and me it's a gift for you and me today it's a gift for you and me and our families and our friends and our neighbors for all those who haven't yet heard of Jesus and it's a gift for tomorrow for you and for me for tomorrow and into eternity a gift that is never taken back and now we have hope whatever sin or temptation threatens to overwhelm us 
Now we can live in freedom. Now we have a peace. God has gifted us with this peace, the Prince of Peace who can dwell in our hearts. Our lives are safe and secure in Jesus, strong and kind, who has room for everyone in his place. Isaac wrote, Isaac Watt wrote the hymn Joy to the World. You know the one? We sang it this Christmas. We sing it every year. And sometimes not just at Christmas time. It's such a great song. It has this verse in it. I think I put it up here. You could sing it. Da, 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 da. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. Sin and sorrow don't have to be our partners. This hope from Jesus takes us beyond that. Now it's no accident that the liturgy of the church, that the church has sung for centuries, even millennium, includes this song of Simeon. And in the liturgy, we sing it in response to Holy Communion. So Simeon held the baby Jesus in his arms and raised him up and said, Now, Lord, let your servant depart in peace. You'll come to the table. We've come to the table through the decades. And when we've gone, historically, we would sing. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light that reveals you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forevermore. Amen. And now may the peace of God that is deeper than all our human understanding keep all our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Christ, the Son of God, give you joy and peace by his presence with you now and always. And so now go in peace as God's children to do his will. And as you go, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace now and always. Amen. Cheers.